This channel is always interested in testing knives and real world scenarios. You're like, uh, could have fooled me. So when you think of the upcoming Mankind versus Vampire War, you'll probably need a good knife to make some sharp pointy sticks. Uh, you're like, steaks? No, 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 they're thawing, probably just leftovers tonight. So I can think of no better knife than the now discontinued Spyderco K2 Fareed. Fareed? It's a big imposing folder with a big but thin flat ground blade, so why don't we go over the dimensions so we can get to work on these uh, sticks. Like the overall length. The blade length. The cutting edge. The handle size, also known as the closed size, the grip area, the spine thickness, the handle thickness, and the weight. I told you it was big. So the K2 is my biggest folder so far. You're like, thanks for the trivia. With the biggest blade made out of a super steel known as CPM 10V, which is an extremely wear resistant super steel not found in a whole lot of knives, especially the cheap ones, which probably accounts for giving the left nut price of Knife Center's recent blowout, $159. It was kind of like a P.T. Barnum style blowout. Spyderco calls a blade a modified Bowie. Yeah, I guess, I mean, it sort of looks like a clip point to me with a flat ground and a satin finish. Deployment isn't tactical speed. This is a big folder designed for durability and cutting performance first and foremost. You can do a middle finger deployment with just a little bit of practice. It's a bit stiff at first, but after a few dozen deployments, it gets easier. Either that or you just get the hang of it. Or just do an easy thumb deployment. Either way, it's still easy to do one-handed, even though I still screw it up, as you can see. It's locked into place by a Reeve Integral Lock. Integral? Or as other knives call it, a frame lock. It goes inward pretty far when engaged, where it's covering about 75% of the tang. It looks super sturdy to me and uh, it's not the world's easiest lock at first to disengage. There's a note on Knife Center's website saying it's more designed to be a two-handed closer, and uh, well, that's probably a slight exaggeration once it's broken in. It's actually easier than some of my smaller frame locks or liner locks that I have. I can easily remove it from my pocket, open and close, all with one hand, and then I can give myself a pat on the back. The handle is remarkably thin. It's made from two solid pieces of titanium, no liners or scales, just two sides of solid titanium. The exterior is, um, I don't know, kind of stonewashed. It's smooth, but it's not polished, almost like it has some sort of wear on the titanium out of the box. Not necessarily like scratches, but like it's been in someone's pocket for a while. The handle is comfortable, no jimping anywhere or hot spots, just smooth and thin, which allows you a tight grip when doing some hard cutting as it's sort of a backup against lock disengagement when you're squeezing it harder. The clip is fixed, tip down, blade forward in your right pocket. It's a working knife, not a fast deployment one, but it is a deep carry and since it's so thin, it actually is a little bit, uh, you don't notice it's there as much as you think you would. You can also fling it hard enough when it's closed to almost lock into place. No, it isn't just cheap knives that do this. It won't open in your pocket though. Okay, so there's already a few reviews of this blade online showing the knife being heavily tested. So let's call this just a confirmation of things you already know and believe, like your Facebook news feed. All right, so let's cut a piece of paper first. Like all Spydercos, this came razor sharp out of the box. First, let's do some fine cutting on some cardboard, you know, because a cheap, sharp kitchen knife wouldn't also do this. So remember that cardboard I cut up during the Benchmade review? Well. It's in a box, and I decided it needed to be minced up further. You're like, I know I've seen that cardboard somewhere before. Anyway, we're cutting it up for the recycling bin. Um, and someone says, what about the vampire fighting? Well, sorry, that was just a through line to trick you into watching uh, this far. It does a fine job of this. I mean, we all thought it would, right? So, uh, yeah, cutting up some cardboard. I don't know, um, it's kind of boring. I'm getting a little bored, so let's go and do some yard work and cut up some fallen bamboo that gets in the way of my lawnmower because folders are made for chopping, right? And you're like, uh, actually they're not. How about a machete? This is a fun blade, so now that it's discontinued, I'm sure you'll wind up paying more than 164 in the future. Sorry, 
It's got a lot going for it, a simple design, great ergonomics. I mean, it's heavy, but it's still lighter than it should be. It's versatile because of its large cutting edge and uh, should be great in the kitchen or the great outdoors. Making a sharp stick or whatever it is you go about doing outside. How about a, what do they call them, feather sticks? Now let's do some batoning with it. And uh, for this, we'll find a reasonable sized piece of wood like, ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so the frame lock really isn't great for this. In fact, it, about the only one I've come across in a folder that uh, is good for this is the SOGS arc lock. Maybe the Spyderco Lion Steel with the Roto Block frame lock combo. Um, I think it's on their Lion Steel's SR1 knives too. Anyway, afterward, the knife uh, was still pretty razor sharp like you thought it would be. Anyway, if you like reviews of expensive knives being treated like cheap ones, subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.